Good morning. Welcome in the name of the Lord. It's a pleasure to have you here in worship today. And well, for that matter, it's a pleasure to be back again. So anyway, um, I was supposed to be back uh, last a, a week ago, Friday, um, and I'd taken a, a week on my sabbatical to go and do some reading. And um, my wife had an old friend that was in Myrtle Beach, and I was like, great, you can visit her, and then I can read, and then I'll hook up with you guys again um, in the evening for dinner, and that will give me the opportunity. I've read 15 books, like 3,000 pages. It was great. So that was fantastic on that. But um, we went to a Presbyterian church um, for worship that time, and um, it was kind of this really interesting place. First of all, if it's, you're in a vacation resort area, you know, they were the kind of folks that um, their Sunday attendance goes up over the summer because of all of the visitors that are around. Um, one of the associate pastors there um, had gone through seminary. She was a member of the congregation there, and she went through seminary. And um, before she went to seminary, her previous job was she was an actress on Days of Our Lives. So it was kind of you know interesting as far as that goes. Um, but I did notice that they did something in the beginning of their worship service that I kind of thought to myself that, um, you know, maybe we should do too. When I say I thought to myself, that means that my wife gave me an elbow. <clears throat> um, here's the thing. In the beginning of the service, um, the pastor came out and introduced themselves. Hi, I'm Joel Remmers. And then when they said, and um, for all of you who are joining us online, um, we appreciate your being there too. Please remember to go ahead and check the website for any upcoming events that may be taking place. And remember, there's a possibility for online giving as well. So anyway, I think we're going to probably make that just kind of a, a part of, of, of what we do. Um, because, you know, we can get over a thousand views. Um, over the course of a week. So consequently, I think that that's a good idea. Um, but when we were trying to leave last Friday, um, we got caught up in that whole software mess that affected the airlines and a whole bunch of the other businesses. So that when we took off from Myrtle Beach, we um, were delayed a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Um, we flew into Charlotte. And of course, you have your phone on airplane mode, so you don't really know what's going on. We walked out of the airplane, and you know those screens that have all of the flights that are going to be telling you when they're going to be departing? We walked up and it said, canceled, 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 canceled. To which case I had a number of obligations that I needed to kind of get ready for. The line to try to get rebooked was as long as the airport was um, that was there. And finally, Kim said, you know, maybe we ought to try to figure out if we need a place to stay and I was like, that's a good idea. So um, I left, we walked down to where the rental car, there's not, there wasn't a rental car to be had. Um, they were all gone. Hotel rooms were kind of the same way. We ended up really getting fortunate that we found um, a hotel room that was not that far from the airport. But of course, we couldn't get there, you know, on that. But they had a shuttle, so that was great. So we got taken to the Holiday Inn by their airport shuttle, and they dropped us off. And of course, we have no transportation. It's out in the middle of nowhere. So consequently, I looked at Kim and I said, you realize that um, when we get old and we go into a home, and they take our keys away, this is what it's going to be like. <laughs> At any rate, a um, number of announcements that we have. Um, if you haven't bought tickets for the, or bought stock, um, for the uh, kids going on mission trips. Um, there's still an opportunity to be able to do that. The um, stockholders dinner isn't until August 11th. Um, this coming Wednesday, we have Kids Connect that's going to be going on. That's where they try to make sure that all of the kids in town who may not have families that would be able to provide everything they need would be able to come here and make sure that they're all set for school. So we're kind of looking forward um, to being a part of that this Wednesday. Um, remember, our ice cream social and um, car show is going to be taking place August 7th at 6.30, and we have two recipients that are both kids from the congregation that have had some uh, medical difficulties, and so we're going to help to offset some of their medical bills with that. Um, our preschool is trying to think about whether they're going to start a new class, which is going to be a class that's called Transitioning to Kindergarten, which is kind of different than just a regular preschool. So they're kind of getting them ready for doing that. Um, that's dependent on whether or not we get the enrollment to do it. But if you have anybody that you know that might be interested in that type of a class, 
um, we're, we're, we're thinking about offering one so you can let them know that, um, that they can call in and see if they can get signed up for that as well. Um, how many of you all noticed the new carpet when you came in? What do you think? Pretty good? All right. Up. All right. Thumbs up. That's good. That's good. I um, want you to know that um, they laid that carpet along with the carpet in the office area and down the educational hallway um, this week. Um, this coming week, they're going to be tearing up the celebration center and um, then laying new carpet in there as well, along with the steps that we have. Um, so if you notice, those don't match right now, but they eventually will um, on that. But um, we're real, real thankful for the number of the people in our congregation who have given generously to things like the development fund, which has let us do that. In addition to that, um, we've had some members of the congregation that have um, um, given um, to that um, Let's see, um, kind, of, kind of the same way that um, um, Pure Listow helped with the lights here, right? On some of those things. So consequently, we're, um, we're, we're, we're thankful for everybody who's, I'm always nervous about doing that because I know I'm going to leave somebody out. And then, but anyway, um, we're just, we're grateful for everybody who gives generously in order for us to be able to do some of those things as well. Um, Junior high lock-in was last night, so if you see a number of the kids up in the balcony that are falling asleep on us, then it doesn't have anything to do with the sermon. Maybe. On that. Um, senior high kids are off to Puerto Rico. I got a phone call yesterday um, that let us know that they have arrived safe and sound and they're ready to start their mission work there. Um, they're planning to get back. Hopefully all of those airline things have been taken care of so that won't be a problem for them. Um, other announcements are listed uh, in your bulletins, in your newsletters on the church website. Um, so please make note of those things as well. Would the congregation please stand? Peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with one another. Our worship continues with the order for confession and forgiveness as followed from the front cover of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please remain standing. The opening hymn is number 779, Amazing Grace.
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Please join me in the prayer of the church for the day. 
gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing to your mm -hmm. word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share their bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Kings, verses 42 through 44. It may be found on page 293 in the Bibles located in the pews. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But the servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the third chapter of Ephesians, verses 14 through 21. It may be found on pages 950 and 951 in the Pew Bibles. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may fill, be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel reading for us today may be followed from page 867, page 867 in the Bibles that are before you in the pew rack. I will be reading from the Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and 
from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the Sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of our Lord. Please remain standing. The hymn is number 678. Ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by loving all. Congregation may be seated. If there are any little people out there that want to come forward for a children's sermon, this would be the time. doing today? Good. Excellent. How, how, how are you? Good. Good. Good morning. So, one, two, three, four of you. What if I told you I didn't know if I had enough suckers today? Have you guys ever run out of stuff? Never? I'm coming to your house. Have you guys ever run out of stuff? Sometimes, yeah. So what happened was is that um, Jesus and his disciples were at a place and they were afraid they were going to run out of stuff. In fact, they were afraid they didn't have enough. There were, you guys get this, 5,000 people. How many people? 5,000. 5,000, that's exactly right. And all they had 
was a young boy came up and brought them five loaves of bread and two fish. What do you think? Five loaves and two fish, is that going to feed everybody? You're right, it did. It did. They started passing it out, and there was so much there that they had 12 baskets full left over because in God's kingdom, there's enough for everybody and to spare. He doesn't run out of things like love. He doesn't run out of things like forgiveness. He doesn't run out of things like grace. He's got more than we need and left over for us so we don't have to worry about whether or not there's going to be enough. Isn't that a good God? Yeah, I think it's a good God too. So here's the thing. I actually do have, in fact, I have more than four suckers. I have an abundance of suckers. So if you guys want to take more than one today, well, we have to pray first. All right? Dear God, thank you for everything that you give, which is even more than we need or that we can ask or imagine. Amen. All right. I know. And there's still a basket full left over. You guys remember there was a song that came out that was by Mercy Me? And it was, you know, I can only imagine what that day will be when your face is before me. All right, we're going to come back to that, so put that in your hip pocket, all right? Um, had so much opportunity on what I was thinking about preaching on today. You know, feeding of the 5,000, 12 baskets left over. That'd be a good sermon, don't you think? Jesus walking on water. Yeah, I was actually listening to a podcast that was done by a couple of Catholic priests and as they were talking about some of these miracles that Jesus did, one of the priests looks at the other one or says to the other one, I mean it was a podcast, um, says to the other one, you know, we make a big deal of all of these miracles of Jesus but there's one miracle that he did that's probably more impressive than all of the rest of the miracles that Jesus ever performed and we never talk about it. And I thought to myself, what miracle that's more impressive than all of the rest of them do we not talk about? Which was basically the same question the other priest asked then. And the first priest said, well, Jesus was 30 years old and he made 12 new friends in a year. <laughs> Instead, I decided to preach from the book of Ephesians. But in order to get into it, you know, that part that says that God is able to give us far more than we either ask or imagine. In order to get into that, I want to tell you a little story. There's a little town in the middle of East Texas in a region that the Texans all refer to as the Piney Woods. Um, the Piney Woods are kind of different than the rest. Of, I mean, Texas is so big, it has all these different regions in it. The Piney Woods are different than like the, 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 the beauty of the hill country, which is further west from there. The Piney Woods are different than the, the, the grandeur of the Gulf Coast with all of the seashore that's there. Um, the Piney Woods are different. Um, they're not nearly as sophisticated as you would find in cities like Dallas or Houston or Austin or San Antonio. Um, but, but they recently made a movie about this little town which goes by the name of, are you guys ready for this? Possum Trot. 
goes by the name of Possum Trot. I'm not making that up. The name of the movie is entitled The Sound of Hope. And if you haven't seen it already, I'm just going to tell you this. It's worth your time. Anyway, the plot goes like this. It's a true story. True story. A minister's wife, her name was Donna, loses her mother back in 1996. And as a result of that, she starts to fall into a depression. Um, Their lives are full already. She's the minister's wife. They already have two children. One of the children that they have is a special needs son. And they're having trouble just kind of getting by and not, not just financially, but that too. But emotionally, she's having trouble getting by. So she decides that what she needs to do is that she goes and visits her old mother's house. The house in which, get this, her mother raised 18 children. As she's there, she's stirred by the memories of all of the times that they had together. She's stirred by the Holy Spirit. And she comes back home renewed with the idea that she believes that God has sent her a message. And so she tells her husband what they need to do. And what she says they need to do is that they need to adopt foster children. And her husband goes, we're barely getting by the way it is. You can hardly get up in the morning. What are you talking about? And she goes, do you think he only talks to you? She spent some time convincing her husband that this is what they need to do. Um, In the meantime, she's already meeting with some of the people from the foster care agencies um, that are in that county. Eventually... She convinces her husband that they're going to go ahead and try to adopt one foster child. But get this. They say, give us the one that nobody else will take. Give us the toughest child that you have. And they do. They foster that child. Actually end up adopting that child. Uh, They bring that child, while they're still fostering her, to church with them. And the rest of the minister's congregation, which is this little bitty chapel called Bennett Chapel in Possum Trot. I I want you to know how big Possum Trot only has like 700 people in the whole town. But the rest of the church is asking what they're doing. And when they start to explain that they are trying to make a difference, that that's the only thing that will help bring us all out of the times that are difficult or emotionally trying is that we need to do something that makes a difference, end up inspiring the entire congregation. Uh, they, They don't end up just adopting one child. They end up adopting four of them into their own family. So a total of six kids, one of them special needs. And the rest of the congregation is so inspired by what takes place that 22 families in that congregation, including the minister's family, end up adopting 77 children. Actually, they called the foster agency saying they thought they could take more. And the foster agency says, we don't have any more to give. You guys have taken them all. In the end, it saved not only so many children, but it transformed that little congregation. It transformed the minister and his wife's family, and it transformed the community. Think about it. They adopted more than 10% of the population of the town. Now, St. Paul writes in his letter to the church of Ephesus. All right, I get it. 
Ephesus is in a whole different part of the world than Possum Trot, Texas is. Ephesus is in modern day Turkey. Possum Trot, like I said, had only about 700 people in population. Ephesus in Paul's day had between 250,000 and 300,000 people that were there. Possum Trot happened in our lifetime Paul wrote to the Ephesians in the first century nearly 2,000 years ago. But it's the same God. It's the same faith that they carried, that we carry. It's the same Holy Spirit who inspires everyone. So St. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. Do you think that there was far more in Possum Trot than they could ask or imagine when they started out? St. Paul continues. Abundantly, far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Far more. Abundantly, far more than we could either ask or imagine. If you are Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, my guess is, is that the people in Ephesus' ability to be able to ask or imagine was big. I mean, no, no, not just big. I mean, really big, like unbelievably big, like huge big. After all, if you're talking about what those people could ask or imagine, they lived in the richest city in the Roman Empire. They lived in the third largest city in the Roman Empire. They were the financial capital of the Roman Empire. This was the place where the spice roads and the silk roads ended and the trade to the Mediterranean world began. This was the place that had the third largest library behind Alexandria and Rome itself. So the idea that there was knowledge, that there was learning, and that there was wisdom there, that stuff flourished. Shoot. If you want to talk about what Ephesus was like in Paul's day, it's not just that the pillars and the columns were made out of marble, but they were. It's not just that the statues were made out of marble, but they were. It's not just that the buildings were made out of marble, but they were. For crying out loud, the streets were made out of marble. Wait, the public toilets were made out of marble. I'm just guessing that their ability to be able to ask or imagine was pretty large, don't you think? They could ask or imagine a whole lot, but... I'm almost getting us off track here because Paul wasn't talking about stuff. He was talking about what they, this small little church in the midst of this vast, huge city, not what they could accumulate, but what they could do. When Paul says it's far more than you could ask or imagine, actually preceding that is that God is able to accomplish in you. So it's not about stuff. It's about mission. It's about ministry. It was about knowing that God was within them, that the Holy Spirit was inspiring them. It's about that they had this power that they had not tapped into to do good, to help, to solve, to make a difference. So St. Paul tells them, 
even though they were few in the midst of so, so, so many. Even though they didn't necessarily have as much as what it looked like in the utter opulence of what they were surrounded with. St. Paul basically says, don't look at all that stuff. Don't pay attention to what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. The power of God within you. Faith in Jesus Christ who saved you. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit inside you. And God can use that if you're willing. God can use that to do more. Excuse me. To do abundantly far more than you either ask or imagine. But of course, you have to believe it. Uh, Richard Bach was an author, wrote a number of books on that. Does anybody have any of his books? You know what some of those are? The most popular one, this is way back on that, um, was a book entitled Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Okay? Um, that's not the book I want to talk about. He had a book that did not get nearly as wide of distribution that was entitled Illusions, The Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah. And in that book, there's this quote. You guys ready? Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. You got that? Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. What he was basically saying is that you, you have to believe it that God gave us this power, that God gave us this love, that God gave us this grace. The question is not only are you going to believe it, but are you going to trust it? Are you going to believe it and trust it so much that we're willing to go out and risk? Not entirely unlike the 30 people from this congregation who this morning are worshiping in a place called Rincon, Puerto Rico. Got a phone call from one of the people in Puerto Rico after they left. I answered the phone at the church and she said, is this Alexa? Now, I don't know about you guys, I don't think I sound like an Alexa, you know? But she said, I just want you guys to know that the last time you were here, you did so much good, more than you could even know. And it sounded to me like more than we could either ask or imagine. Same thing happened with the junior high mission trip that got back from Colorado, where for the last number of years as they go and they work with special needs individuals, the people from Colorado at Lutheran Valley Retreat keep calling us back and asking whether or not they can book our church for next year as well. Because apparently it's more than we could have asked or imagined. We could talk about that with Royal Family Kids Camp and the kids who are abused and neglected. We could talk about that with Kids Connect that's coming up. We could talk about that with making sandwiches for the open. I mean, here's the fact. fact of the matter is, is that we are able to do, through the power that is within us, more than we could either ask or imagine. It's not that your efforts win your salvation. Jesus already accomplished that. But your efforts may bring glory to God and help other people. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. If you watch the movie, The Sound of Hope, they're not shy about telling you in that movie how things were difficult as they were working through that. But the people in Possum Trot, Texas, figured out that it's worth it. It's worth it more than you could even ask or imagine. So remember, I started the sermon by saying, I can only imagine 
This isn't only imagine. This is abundantly far more than you could ask or imagine. Not only. The power is within us to help others to bring glory to God. More than you could ask or imagine. I would invite the congregation to stand and sing the hymn as number 807. safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Let's join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life of the life, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now pick up the offering. You may be seated.
We will do the prayers of the church. I will say, merciful God, and the responsible will receive our prayer. Let us pray for the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of the church, the world, and one another. Dear Father, thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you for Jesus, your word and love made flesh. Thank you for strengthening us in faith, hope, and love through the gift of your Holy Spirit, merciful God. You have rooted and grounded the church in the life-giving body of your dear Son. May the church always feed, heal, teach, and draw many souls to Jesus, merciful God. Shelter and bless all who suffer for naming Jesus as Lord. By their faithful endurance and charity, soften the hearts of their enemies, bring many to repentance and salvation, merciful God. Nourish the people of this congregation with the living bread of heaven. Heal us with your mercy and forgiveness. Make us brave and wise as we strive to share your saving love with those around the, us. Merciful God. Bless your young adults with strength of character to resist the follies of the culture. Channel their energy and idealism into deeds of mercy and words of wisdom. Use them to introduce skeptical friends and cynical co-workers to you, the source of all goodness, truth, and beauty. Merciful God. Give upright hearts to those entrusted with leadership in government, education, industry, or the arts. Teach them to love wisdom and righteousness. Help them to use power and authority rightly so all people are blessed with freedom justice and opportunity. Merciful God. Fill the people of this congregation with gentleness, generosity, and compassion. Help us reflect Jesus' goodness to everyone we, who, who we meet. Let our church become a heaven of grace to everyone. We lift up Quinn Louise Conan, who was baptized this weekend. Let her light shine to the world before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Merciful God. Holy Father, on the blessed weekend, we humbly seek your divine strength and guidance for the 50th anniversary of David and Cynthia Montague. Grant them continued commitment to love and honor and to cherish one another. May their bond grow stronger each day as they navigate life's joys and challenges together merciful God. We pray for all who risk their lives on behalf of ours. Equip them with every virtue they need to do their jobs faithfully and well. Help us to honor their service and sacrifice. Help them use their skills in new ways when their duties are completed. Merciful God. Bestow your Holy Spirit upon all who cry out to you. Graciously heal, restore, and strengthen them. Bless everyone who assists them in their time of need. Increase their trust in you, their strength, and their Redeemer, merciful God. Keep your tender care, dear Father. All who have died trusted you, trusting in your promises, especially Dale and Jean Jansen on the loss of their daughter-in-law, Cherry. Sherry. Heal their grief and strengthen their faith. Nourish us with the bread of life and refresh us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us into your heavenly kingdom where the, with all the Redeemer, with all those redeemed, we rejoice in your goodness forever. Merciful God. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord, as it is best for us and most glorifies your holy name. Amen. Join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 840. the body of Christ.